birthday if she was still with us, but she's in another better place. So we'll have the roll call. Board Member Bennett? Here. Board Member Foy? Board Member Long? Here. Board Member Morgan? Here. Board Member Parks? Here. Board Member Pollock? Here. Board Member Sharkey? Present. Board Member Tucker? Board Member Zaragoza? Here. And Board Member Ramirez? Here. All right, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Mr. Paul, could you lead us? It'd be my pleasure. Hand over your heart, ready to begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item uh, are the minutes of the um, board meeting that was held April 14th. Um, we have the approval of minutes. Any uh, other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. So we'll go ahead, those are approved. Agenda review. Um, any comments from board members? Suggestions, changes, nothing? Mm -hmm. So um, we'll proceed with that. Uh, public comment, item six. This is a time set aside for citizen rep presentations about matters not on the agenda. And you have five minutes. We have do have one speaker, Mr. Kevin Tohill. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Board of Supervisors, APC staff, and my neighbors. I am Kevin Tohill, and today I'm speaking with an update on the C.L. Burnett oil facility adjacent to my property. We are currently working with Mike Vegas and the APC staff to revise the rule for ah. exemption for vapor recovery next to residential homes. Unfortunately, we are still working on the language and the exact requirements for the having a flare to be away from a residential home. Due to this fact, the flare has off gases, and these facilities are typically unmanned. As we continue to work through the requirements on a specific distance, it would also be helpful to require a fire department permit as well as a permit and zone clearance from the city and county agencies and jurisdictions. CL Barnett has a CUP 918 and an SUP 812 that they are currently regulated under. The intent of these conditions is to protect the children and families in neighboring homes to these facilities. I am turning into you today the copy of the CUP and SUP conditions, as well as the citation from the last inspection, February 26, 2015. Although the facility is considered shut in and not operating, the facility was cited for two minor leaks and one major leak during that inspection. The well that was leaking was directly behind my home. The facility was also cited from Doggo. Unfortunately, C.L. Barnett did not fix the leaks Oops. within the five days required, but they did finally fix them on March 30th. They were not able to fix the coupling on my, <coughs> at, at, located by my property line, but they, they did remove the oil and cap it off. When the facility is up and running, again, this pipeline will be used to take oil from wellhead number two down to the storage tank. My hope is that APCD will come back out and we inspect once the facility is operating. For the past two inspections, they have not been pumping oil during inspection, but they have had leaks. Attached is the paperwork that C.R. Barnett turned in regarding the lanterns that they burned off and installed for the gases. The water analysis report and the requirements for disposal of industrial waste, water. Where does the water go? The storage tank that is mentioned in the paperwork is not being used, and, the, and they are not hauling the water from the, from the site. Whatever the Board of Supervisors can do to help ensure that C.L. Barnett follows its CUP and SUP conditions and give me guidance to those with a proper agencies to enforce these conditions would be appreciated. I feel like maybe I'm not touching base and talking to the right people yet. I hope to be back in the near future with a revised rule for your vote and approval. In closing, C.L. Barnett's permit is up for renewal this month. If the board and APCD could review the CUP and SUP conditions and help enforce these before the permit is renewed, it would be appreciated. Thanks again for all your efforts. 
for my kids, my wife, and my family. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I have no other speaker cards, so uh, I'll go on to uh, seven, item seven, board comments. Any members of the board wish to make a comment? If I might, just in response, um, certainly I know Mr. Viegas was taking notes and just looking at this, I expect with everything within our regulatory authority, you'll follow through with. I, I think this gentleman's been coming to us repeatedly, so. Oh, absolutely. We're moving on the rule revision, mm -hmm. and, and the really, the difficult issue is not really, we've got the issue resolved as far as requiring vapor recovery in the form of a flare or some other device. Mm -hmm. The difficult issue is the placement of the flare, and just to let you know real quickly, that notice of violation gives us a great handle because we can settle that violation by requiring a placement of the flare not near the homes in essence. So okay. I think we can resolve it all. And of course they would have to work with fire and, and the county and the city of Simi. Their, their little tiny lease straddles the line between the county and the city. Question, question. Don't leave. Uh, is there enough flame there to do, what do you call that? Uh, we'll make energy out of that flame, trapping it and making There's energy out of it? There's probably not enough gas there. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, they're using electric motors to drive mm -hmm. the wells. So that means you can't burn the gas in some kind of combustion uh, device to uh, drive the wells. But there's lower emission using electric, but they just don't produce enough gas that they could sell it or burn it. That's I mean, what I'm asking. They can, they're just going to dispose of it by burning, in essence. It's a very small volume. Okay. Any other comments? Thank you very much. Thank you for coming, Ms. Cho. Um, all right, next item is the um, public. I got this right. Public uh, hearing regarding adoption of the Ventura County. Air Pollution Control District's proposed fiscal year 2015-2016 budget. Mr. Viegas. Yes, Chair Ramirez, members of the board, I'm Mike Viegas, Air Pollution Control Officer. This presentation will be popping up any second. So. As you're aware, the district's budget has two components, our operating fund and our pass-through grant fund. Today I'm going to be talking about the operating budget because the pass-through grant budget always has balanced revenue and expenditures, and those monies are, are basically our Carl Moya program, and they do not affect the district's bottom line. This slide is a summary, and it shows that the district total budget is just over $9.1 million, composed of the operating budget of $8.3 million, and the balance in the pass-through accounts. We also are including at this time uh, district staffing based at a level of 48 full-time equivalents, which is the same as last year. When you look at the bottom line, we have a net cost excluding contingency of $410,000. But this year, as in years prior, we have revenue budgeted for fines and penalties at a level of $104,000, where in reality, we're going to see most likely an additional $100,000 in revenue from that category. So we're looking at, at a net cost of approximately $310,000. And another thing to keep in mind is when you look through the, the paperwork on our budget, we're paying approximately $495,000 for our current lease at our location here across from the government center. God, that's a lot. And uh, when, once we purchase a building, which is our plan, and I'll be coming to your board on June 23rd for a closed session on that item, we should reduce our operating cost there by about $300,000 for, you know, at least five years while the building's new. So we're going to see a substantial drop in our operating costs. And in the interim, I think it's a reasonable use of our existing fund balance, which is quite high, to deal with those couple years until we can get into a building. Looking at the expenditures, they're up by $332,000, and revenue's up by $192,000, and we have one increment to request. 
Looking at the increment two request, you see it's a request for $25,000, and historically, in recent years, we've been using it for electric vehicle infrastructure or some other type of mobile source emission reduction. And if we, we need to pass these monies through. We, we really can't hang on because we're allowed to use the DMV monies for our work on motor vehicle related programs, but once we've done that, and, and we have a positive balance, we need to pass that money through. On the expenditure side, uh, the big increase is really caused by salaries and employee benefits, and those came pursuant to amendments to the memorandum of agreements for both VEA and SEIU, along with the APCD management resolution. You're seeing uh, modest increases in salary. Service and supplies up by about $73,000, and the, the lion's share of this is help for the district in software development from outside consultant and from county ISD. And lastly, appropriations for fixed assets down by $39,000, and this is because we've replaced the lion's share of our monitoring equipment in the prior fiscal year, so it's, it's pretty well up to date right now, so we're not seeing any major expenditures there. This slide shows how the money is on the expenditure side, and what you can see is about 76% of our expenditures are salaries and employee benefits. And looking at the out years, at least for the near future, we're looking at increases in retirement contribution. On the increase for the revenue, we're looking at $192,000. They're really coming from two sources as the economy starts to rebound. We're seeing more sources on permit, so our renewal fees are climbing, and we're also seeing more vehicles registered in the county even though the county population isn't changing much, it seems people are adding that third car back onto registration and our revenue's ticking up there. Really? Wow. When you look at the three big sources of revenue for the district, you see the DMV fees at 2.9 million, permit fees at 3 million, and our federal grant at 1.1 million. And if you look at that strand there of state subvention, that's our, our whopping $200,000 to fund all the mandates from Sacramento, Crazy. which uh, Crazy. this has not increased in, from this level in, in decades. That's crazy. And Mike, what does that cover? <laughs> what does that cover? Really, the California Cleaner Act uh -huh. has put so many requirements on us in our permitting program and on our planning uh, mm -hmm. program to do these triennial updates, all feasible measures analyses, all of this work, and, and you're, you know, basically we're using permit fees and our federal grant to cover that work because the 200000 is woefully inadequate. But that never has in increased at all, that percentage. No, it hasn't. It's been flat for at least 20 years. <laughs> it did increase for about one year, and then the budget got tight and they did away with the increase. So. Interesting. I have a question. Um, the slide went a little faster than my reading. On the DMV uh, funds, were you saying they need to be returned? Well, no, passed through. Passed through. Mm -hmm. Could you be more specific what that means? Basically, you, you need to grant them out for some tour, type of motor vehicle emission reduction project. So it could be the work we did with Gold Coast in the past on transit incentives electric vehicle infrastructure, something along those lines. Okay, so they'll, they'll stay in the county. We just oh, won't be able to allocate them from here. Yes, we would allocate them as the district. Uh, the big picture, we're operating well with the reduced staffing that we've cut back over the past decade. And once again, fees and grants do not cover all costs related to stationary sources. But on the DMV side, our costs related to motor vehicle sources are covered and then some. We also had a 2.5% increase in our permit renewal fees. And unfortunately, the day before we brought that to your board, we were notified that our federal grant was dropping by almost the identical amount. So, and that was after being assured in October of 14 that the federal grant would be stable for the fiscal year. So things happen. 
Keanu. Once again, states of vengeance level at 200,000. This doesn't make sense. They're out preaching air quality and all this stuff and then cutting our grants to help control. It's, it's it, we're, we're kind of hit with the perfect storm. Yep. This administration is pushing very hard mm -hmm. on environmental issues, especially climate change. And Congress is pushing very hard back on climate change. Mm -hmm. So they're, in essence, going after the EPA budget because uh, that's really where you have the, 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 the control of the purse strings. So Jeez. we're kind of caught in the middle. Of it, and I have to let you know that the air districts and the states have been really getting to EPA and saying, look, we realize that your political appointees, upper management, are really focused on climate change. But it seems that you're not focused on air quality anymore. And that's the public health issue. Yeah. So we, we've kind of stressed that with this current administration. Is there any, any would there be any positive effects if we went and, and talked to them? About Certainly. Sure. Actually, you'll be seeing, I've sent letters to the Senate side right now, appropriations folks. Well, the agencies are more what I'm talking about, not because they're the ones that recommend to the Senate. And to the, I mean, talking to the agencies about their budgets and, when, and they're shorting us like that. Well, well the agencies, the, the administration's request, request had an increase in our funding. Oh. However, Congress is kind of cutting EPA across the board. <sighs> yes. Uh, yeah, Mr. Viega, just, just kind of following up. Now, the, the federal months, it, 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 federal funds, uh, are these tied up with the Budget Control Act? I mean, we, you know, if there's a sequestration issue, uh, or is this, is this a, a specifically more targeted at, at EPA budget? It's been more targeted at the EPA budget, really. And like I said, Congress is just not happy with the direction the administration's going on climate change, and EPA's the agency that's implementing the administration's direction on climate change. So, yeah, okay, thanks. Go I'm ahead, so please. In Thank you. Interest in air quality. <laughs> on the incentive funds, we're using all the administrative funds that we receive to basically run that program, and we're doing quite well on running the Moyer program with the funds that are provided uh, for administration by the state. And luckily, we have a very large fund balance that allows us to weather this situation where we're basically waiting to buy a building and, and paying extra funds at this time in our lease. Looking at our fund balance, remember that we have an operating budget of about $8.3 million, and we have a fund balance of $13.3 million. And as you can see, we have money set aside for fixed assets should we have failure of monitoring equipment. Not likely in the year, 300000 set aside for litigation. Uh, money set aside for additional motor vehicle projects. And we have money set aside for handling the fund balance, the net cost, including contingency. And that still leaves $6.5 million towards the building and an unassigned fund balance of $5.4 million. That's good. And keep in mind that the upper target is $4.2 million based on six months operating reserves, which is the upper target for the fund balance. So we're, we're in very good shape. Yep. Many years of operating in the black has left us there. Jealous. And this is the fund balance projection. And you can see what happens when we purchase the building. Uh, the $6.5 million drops out. This does not have any fee increases in it. And it shows that for the foreseeable future, we're going to be above that target. But we're going to have to watch that slope of the line after 16, 17 with, with fee increases. And, and we, to be honest, there, there's two things going with the federal grant. Uh, another Air District did an analysis and showed that the agency that receives the most funding per capita is the Santa Barbara District. We're not far behind, but we're receiving more per capita than the South Coast District. Oh, so, really? Why yes. is that? And <laughs> they did this two decades ago. They set up these formulas. And, you know, they're an extreme non area, non attainment area in the South Coast. We're a serious, so that doesn't make sense. And you have Santa Barbara as attainment receiving the Don't highest say per anything. capita. Quiet. Don't I know. <laughs> I, I, unfortunately, I didn't do the study, but it's out there now. So okay. I think that's going to play into future reallocation. We got a lot more. We got a lot more. That's all I have. I'll be happy to take questions. Yes, uh, Member Bennett. I, and I, I continue to. Um, Express concern, you know, when you get to um, you're gonna have a big drop because of the thing, but 
the fact that there, the trend is still dropping at a time when we don't know what the federal government's going to do. I mean, I, I would be very concerned about the red line with the yellow dots being in a downward trend. If that stayed flatter, you could let your your required fund balance gradually come up as your uh, you know as your budget grows or as problems come or if it dropped because of unexpected things but to actually plan for it to be continuing to be trending down in those later years it doesn't make sense to me I, I, that's not what i would recommend yeah this certainly policy. isn't a plan uh -huh. this is just a projection without fee increases okay so that that is not my uh, that's, take that's on how to policy. do things. That's no, just, okay, that's not great. policy. Right. Without Fine. increases, we'll so it that. makes a big difference, All right? So, Madam, because I really see what's happening with the federal grant is, I'm trying to tell the story to EPA and Congress that if you back out this grant, we're putting the burden of the programs back on our industries. That's the bottom line. Okay. Go ahead, please. Are you finished? Yes, that that's it. it. Thank you very much. Other uh, comments, questions from the members? So what is the pleasure of the board? We have a public hearing. I have no speaker cards. So. Your Honor, one, one thing. It would be kind of nice to see how the increases in fees would reflect on that so we could see what that, how that would you know, drive it up a little bit. Okay, what we'll do is we can run projections, you know, starting mm -hmm. out with like 5%, that type of thing, and, and right. come back to you. We could bring that to the standing committee. That It'll would look be. a lot better than it is now if it's got that 5%. Oh, absolutely. There it does change the slope of the line. It's already good. So go ahead. Sorry. Other comments or questions? No. Let's say, what's the pleasure of the board? Move the approval of the staff's recommendation. Is there a second? Second. So we have a motion and a second. So, uh, do we need a roll call vote on this, or just? Uh, no, wait, I believe on this time, what you do is you close the public hearing, oh, okay. and then we come back on June 23rd. Okay, very you're good. Right. And adopt okay. the. Uh, right. It's a two in California. It's a two-step process for right. air districts. It is. All right, and um, uh, certainly public is uh, invited to come back and comment again or at any time. So, uh, so is there a motion to close the public hearing rather than the? Just close it. I can just close it. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Um, not familiar with that. Yeah, we don't. That's not how we do it in Um But all right. So we'll close. The door can open and close. <laughs> it's, okay. It's we're closing the public hearing on the budget, and to be uh, revisited again at our next meeting. So correct. Right. Right. Um, all right. So item nine is approval of the Simi Valley Landfill and Recycling Center. I'll favor for the motion. Oh, to I'm sorry. Have meeting. Oh. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mm -mm. All right, so we've, that's uh, completed there. On to item nine. Approval of the Simi Valley Landfill and Recycling Center Air Quality Mitigation Agreement requiring Waste Management of California Incorporated to pay an air quality mitigation fee of 427518 for mitigation of air quality impacts of the Simi Valley and Recycling Center expansion project and authorization of the air for the air pollution control officer to execute the air quality mitigation agreement and make any necessary minor non-monetary administrative changes thereto subject to county council review. Mr. Villegas. Yes, waste management's project to expand the Simi Valley landfill was approved by the County Board of Supervisors in 2011. Part of this action was certification of the final environmental impact report. And that EIR detailed how to handle air quality mitigation from the increase in emissions. And how it works is in developing the EIR, the agency working on it, the county in this case, looks to the APCD's guidelines on preparation of air quality impact analyses. And basically how it works, because we are non-attainment for ozone in Ventura County, any increase of either reactive organic compounds or nitrogen oxides over 25 pounds per day is deemed significant. Now the final EIR had, had multiple uh, mitigation measures for air quality, but, but the two big ones are AQ3, which required waste management to implement 
basically all feasible uh, measures to reduce emissions, such as using EPA Tier 4 uh, engines in the equipment working at the landfill, and just keeping those emissions down. AQ4 says after you've implemented AQ3, you look at the emission increase. If it's still significant, you need to provide funds to the district to implement Carl Moyer type projects at some area in Ventura County that will reduce ozone levels in Simi Valley. So what we did is we sat down with waste management and the first thing we noticed, both waste management staff and district staff looked at the final EIR and we had some issues with how the calculations were done. First of all, the number of truck trips was limited to 892 in the solid waste facility permit that was issued by Environmental Health Division here at the county, which is actually lower number of truck trips than what was included in the EIR. So there's a reduction in the project emissions. Also, waste management had a target of using 50% of their, having 50% of their trucks operated on alternative fuels where they're exceeding that at this time using compressed natural gas and liquefied natural gas, another reduction uh, to the emissions increase. There was also a poor assumption in the EIR on employee trip uh, back and forth to work. Basically, that project included moving GI rubbish, which is a subsidiary of waste management and who handles, handles the waste hauling in the East County from an off-site location south of the 118 to the landfill location. And what they did in the, in the EIR is they added those trips as if they were new, when in reality, the workers were already going, getting off and driving south to the existing facility. And lastly, I told you about the T, Tier 3 engines Waste management purchased a compactor at the landfill with a tier four engine, which is the absolute lowest emission model you can get. So bottom line, the emission increase was reduced. And when we look, redid the numbers, they were no longer significant for reactive organic compounds, but were significant for nitrogen oxides. So we're proposing to enter into a mitigation agreement with the county and waste management and this would require waste management to provide the district with $427,000 towards mitigation projects to reduce ozone emissions in ozone levels in Simi Valley. And, and it would work quite well because if you look at the prevailing winds in Ventura County, they take the emissions from western Ventura County, bring them in to Simi, they pass through Moore Park, so we would also be providing a benefit to the city of Moore Park. And basically, we're going to have to implement emission reduction projects that benefit CME. And I, I just don't think we're going to be looking at any fishing boats at all. I think it, they're going to have to be closer <laughs> for people to see a nexus and actually to feel comfortable with how the program is being implemented. And this program is identical to the program we used for the new Tola landfill. I'll be happy to answer questions. Questions from the members? I, I do have one. I think he already spoke on you, but I have a. a the, we you mentioned a few different programs: Carl Moyer, uh, Clean Air Fund, Low Emissions School Bus Program, those kind of things that can reduce the NOx. But we also found that the um, the program we did with mitigation in with the large cargo ships also reduced NOx. Working with the County of Santa Barbara. And I think we we're saying uh, those uh, ships make about a third of the NOx in Ventura County. So if we could make a dent in that while they're not fishing boats, like you're saying, do you think that program could reduce the NOx in CME too? I think I'd be a lot more comfortable if Supervisor Foy gave me the green light to do that. <laughs> I, I just want to hear from mm -hmm. basically the electeds in the East County in that area to make sure they would be comfortable with something like that. Right. I, I'm just thinking from a scientific perspective also whether that would have the effect of reducing NOx if you know a third's coming from the ships and we can get them to lower their emissions by slowing down and not killing whales too. Which is nice. Absolutely and scientifically what you're proposing makes a hundred percent sense. Okay so we'll, we'll wait and see what the supervisor thinks too. Sure. Other comments? Board members? Mm -mm. Well, I I hope you support something that our director says makes 100% scientific sense. <laughs> <laughs>
It certainly does, but, it, but if you remember go, going back to the Tolan landfill program, Dick Baldwin lost the argument on, on saying, you know, we could do it in, in the western part of the county. We ended up, we basically implemented projects in the Santa Clara Valley, which is very, it's very workable because of the amount of agriculture in that area. That's not the case in Simi. It seems to, Your Honor, sorry. It seems to me that if you're going to work on projects in the area which produce that, your likelihood of, that would be better likelihood of reducing NOx, or uh, what do you call it? Yeah, there than it would be coming from the ocean. That's a long trip. We have, as it we is, do but the same ones in to, the same city. You, you have to remember them. the science of ozone formation is when the NOx and ROC emitted, are emitted in western Ventura County, they don't form ozone right away. No. They're carried inland and over time as they get into those higher temperatures and sunlight, mm -hmm. then they form the ozone. So yeah. it, it does make sense. I mean, I would feel a lot more comfortable if we were doing projects in the Santa Rosa Valley, that type of thing, for the people in Simi. You know, because, you know, it's got to be a transport program and the people, the public and see me and the elected officials have to feel comfortable that they're getting bang for the buck in essence. Mm -hmm. Other comments, board members? I, I would also say while the landfill is impacting see me, it's also impacting Moore Park. Certainly. So, I mean, we can't exclude them too. Yeah. Right. Correct. Do you want to say something? Do you like whales? No. Yeah. <laughs> I like that answer. That's a great kind of All right. Um, any other comments with that? Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Over you and stays there. <laughs> Move approval of staff recommendation. Second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No, the motion passes. Thank you very much. Thanks for that good work. Um, item 10, receive and file the new source review rule, annual report regarding rule 26.11 or 11, emission reduction credit evaluation at the time of use. Yeah, this is our annual new source review report to your board pursuant to our rule 2611. New source review is the program that governs new facilities moving into the county and modifications that increase emissions at existing facilities. It has two main components, best available control technology, which we require on any modification or new facility, any increase, I want to make it clear, even a very small increase is subject to best available control technology. We also require that new facility or that expanded facility to provide emission reduction credits for any remaining emission increase beyond best available control technology. California law and our NSR programs in California require that when you bank emission reductions, they need to be surplus when they're banked. And what that means is that emission reduction was beyond any regulatory requirement at the time it was banked. EPA has a policy that says the emission reduction credits need to be surplus at the time they're used, which when you think about that from the regulated community standpoint, they're not sure of the value of the credits they have in the bank until they go to use them, which obviously didn't go over very well here with our regulated community or any other district in California. So several air districts have implemented this equivalency program. And basically, as long as we show that we're being more stringent or as least as stringent as the federal program, Major modifications and major new sources do not need to supply emission reduction credits that meet the federal surplus at time of use requirement. And I need to be very upfront about this because in the past, this was kind of an academic exercise because we had not seen a major new source or major modification in this county for 30 years. <laughs> but we have an application in right now for a major new facility. So, and this could benefit them modestly and they're still going to comply with a very stringent California program but it is it did provide regulatory relief and it, it could occur in this situation what city is it in so we know which way it's going to drift no <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have I'll be happy to take questions thank you other questions from members it's not no nice what is the new source that you're referring that's to what I'm after. It, it'd be the NRG proposal the Puente power project where uh, Mandalay Beach. Mandalay Beach. Let's uh, emphasize proposal. Yes. Thanks. 
potential. Thank you. Other uh, comments, questions? Just a, a, yes. a, a very broad one, and that is for decades and all, there's been a policy that is basically pay to pollute. So if you yeah. are going to have pollution, you pay funds into it. And that's just something that our county has adopted. Well, emission reduction credits, th this whole trading program is really mandated from both the federal and California Clean Air Act. Right. And it, it, in essence, requires mitigation beyond dust available control technology. So, so it's very positive from that standpoint. But I think the public perception of trading the right to pollute, which is actually required by those two acts, is not looked upon very favorably. Let's put it that way. No, it hasn't been. Other comments? Well, we're receiving files. Thank you. Yeah, it's not like we have cap and trade or something. <laughs> they start capping it. There's a second. So, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, well, that's approved. And the next item, um, item 11, approval of 2.5% merit increase for the Air Pollution Control District Air Pollution Control Officer, Executive Officer, effective June 7th. And I see Mr. Carroll here. Thank you. Move the approval. <laughs> second. Uh, comments, questions? Do you have, would you, you're here, so just I'm say here something. On behalf of your standing committee, we compiled the results of the individual assessments and provided them in April of this year, and this recommendation is made on their behalf. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to stand with my move. Okay, I'll second, because okay. I don't see how we couldn't. Uh, he comes through with budgets that I can't believe sometimes I balances them. And so I think we're in good shape. I approve. We have a motion second, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Any opposed? No. Thank you, Mr. Carroll, and thank, thank you, you, Mr. Villegas. Um, the last item is 12, receive and file an application for Section 103 grant from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. This is just for your information. We're applying for approximately $34,000 for federal support for our PM 2.5 monitoring effort. That's it. Thank you very much. Any comments or questions on that? Is there a second? Second. That? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? No. I think that concludes our business. Your Honor, could I yes. say one thing? It, it was in the paper last week about the EPA's findings on fracking. Did you read that? Mike, yes. did you keep that article? Uh, I, I believe I, 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 basically with the web nowadays, I just <laughs> let them keep Usually, sometimes your staff will cut those out and save those just for, because it did set, talk about fracking. I'm sure all you read it, so. I read it. There's been some uh, I just wanted to let you know it. we Actually. do have a standing committee today, and I see a quorum of three there, so it'll be very brief. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much, everybody. That's good.